A very good morning to all, and it is a pleasure for me to welcome you all to GeoBIM conference. Well, we see various trends that are driving the infrastructure segment, like rise in urbanization, uh, aging developed economies, renewal and increased infrastructure, shifting demography. Of all these, uh, most influencing factor that I see is the unprecedented rate of urbanization which has occurred in the past and as projected for the decade, which has represented like the largest impact human had had on the planet. And this is driving the infrastructure in the building and infrastructure too. It is projected that the worldwide infrastructure spending will go to 41 trillion in 2030 for the, from the current spending of 24. And this growth will come entirely from the developing world, of which 65% of the demand growth will come from China, India, Indonesia, and Russia. In Western Europe, best growth hopes are from UK and Sweden. Well, this was on the built environment or the infrastructure sector that I has just uh, elaborated, which consists of construction, facilities management, and property. And of this, only the construction sector output globally in 2013 was about $7.2 trillion, which is about 10% of the world GDP. And it is supposed to grow to $15 trillion by 2025. And this growth is predominantly expected in emerging economies that I have already pointed out, which will, like the emerging countries, from about 35% of the global construction output will increase to 55% in 2020. Of all these spendings in construction and infrastructure sector, the governments are devoting less of their limited funds of capital infrastructure projects and are looking for the private sector to fill in the gap. And the private sector investors the poor construction productivity is an important factor in eroding the return on, invest on infrastructure and making infrastructure less attractive for private investment. Here comes the role of technology for us. Well, all this has set a stage for a radical transformation of the construction and the convergence of geospatial and building information modeling is expected to play an important role in this transformation, and it is rapidly evolving to meet these challenges. The mantra of better, faster, and cheaper ha has arrived in a way of working which promises design and built assets more cheaply and faster, but also to make them better performing. BIM will influence the performance in the sector which occupy and use building and infrastructure, and infrastructure is a substantial part of the built environment and is mapped on geospatial. Let me elaborate further on this. What is BIM? That comes to my mind. BIM is not just a software tool or simply a technology that can be acquired and implemented. It is really a paradigm that combines technology with people and process issues of our industry to result in a tectonic shift in the way we deliver the built environment and the 3D model of the project to enhance its design, construction, operation, and maintenance. So the integration of geospatial and BIM gives the real world context to the project. Let's now understand the geospatial side of it. First, let me check out some of the myths that are there with regards to geospatial. First is some consider geospatial as GIS or some as remote sensing. But geospatial is more than just GIS or remote sensing. It encompasses in itself anything and everything that has reference and spatial in its character and context. It has several specialized technology under its umbrella like GIS, remote sensing, LIDAR, laser scanning, GNSS, surveying, and many more. And it has evolved through a collaborative process over the past two decades which has progressed from a visualization <laughs> tool, just a visualization tool towards an industrialization process. And the various spatial technologies are integrating to converge themselves in various industry domains like graphics, engineering, telecommunications, and are embedding themselves in their processes like BIM, 
SCADA, or ERP, and are providing solutions to various domains like <coughs> construction, agriculture, banking, finance, and many more. So this industrial process has enabled the application of this technology in almost every human activity and empowered every business processes and has moved from geospatial industry to innovate, converge, and integrate with business processes of promising industries like manufacturing, plant, design, and building. Now let's look at the various stages of construction that is plan, design, build, and operate, and see how the geospatial is playing a crucial role in it. Let's see GIS. The first stage that is design. With the development of new infrastructure, the requirement is to complete the inventory of the existing pertinent geospatial data. And this consists of gathering existing information which may have been developed from various means like photogrammetry, field survey, satellite imagery, and any other means. And at this stage, GIS is an important tool in analyzing these informations together. It was an important tool actually for planning in East Link Tollway. I'll just give you a case study, which is in Australia. <coughs> this was the largest road project of date, was constructed over 42 months period. And the use of GIS within the East, project, East Link project delivered a number of benefits, such as it gave 10% reduction in the cost, 50% uh, like improvement in cartographic map production, and an automated spatial data workflow, faster staff access to timely and multi-layer data, and improved reporting capabilities. Coming to remote sensing. Remote sensing is used in the planning phase of the construction process for risk mapping and damage assessment for disaster of the construction site. It is very useful in monitoring the progress of the construction in huge projects. The aim of the Port of Rotterdam Authority was to enhance the Port of Rotterdam's competitive position as a logistic hub and a world-class industrial complex. And the aim of the project was to add around 5,000 acres of new land while keeping the port fully functional. In this planning, satellite imagery played a very vital role. The satellite imagery also observed the port's expansion in 2006, 9, 10, which provided the authorities to monitor in real time the progress of the project. Coming to mobile mapping. Mobile mapping plays a very important role in construction project planning. For example, consider a renovation and upgrade of a commercial building. Using a mobile mapping system, project owners can create a detailed 3D model of the building and surrounding areas and create a realistic image of the project and its effect on the nearby structure. The design phase. In this phase, the surveying is very key. Prior to engineering construction, design of a new infrastructure, demand analysis and need analysis is to be done for facility sizing and specific site, uh, site data requirement for the design and construction of infrastructure are developed for quality engineering design and to minimize the accurately predict construction cost. LiDAR offers an alternative and effective technology choice that can help collect terrain data in timely and resource intensive manner. Let's look at the airport of Brisbane as an example. A proposed duplication of the Brisbane airport runway was a very complicated by the fact that the original airport designers had diligently planned rows of dense vegetation on the proposed extension area. And the vegetation coverage was the main feature which led the design team to utilize LiDAR for this project. Ground penetrating radar helps in locating the steel rebar, electrical conduit or utilities and other obstructions both underground and in a concrete at a construction site. So this technology plays a very critical role in the initial phase of design. Let's take a look at one of the case studies. During the remodeling of the hospital, this is in Brazil, 
the contractor was tasked with cutting trenches and cutting one conduit could have potentially caused loss of power for the nearby section of the hospital. New drain lines were to be installed and the thicker foundation were uh, required for increased loads and heavier equipment. So using GPR, the contractor could precisely locate conduit below grade or inside concrete floors. <coughs> During the construction process, a variety of data collection functions occur, including testing materials, documenting construction <coughs> conditions at milestones, and recording final as-built condition, which is critical for future facility performance, evaluation, expansion, and operational management. Laser scanner and uh, the total station plays a very critical role here. As a contractor works progress in the superstructure, the survey work also continues. So laser scanner and total station plays a very significant role in layout and alignment. So if proper surveying is not done, the construction phase, the result might be something like this. Let's take one of the examples of Crossrail. Recently, uh, I was at one of the conference wherein it was said that when Crossrail was built, there was two projects going on together, the building of the real Crossrail and the virtual uh, model of it. So Crossrail is a new tree uh, line that is, was built across the London. So the route of this line was to pass through a 21 kilometers, a twin boat tunnel beneath the London, and this was a very big challenge for the project owner, as managing the risk of movement caused in tunneling under the city was a huge challenge for the engineers working on the project and it was required to know the baseline level and positioning of the buildings and street ever. And of course, this information had to be recorded accurately and repeatedly, and total station was widely used on the construction site for measuring it. In large construction projects, it is a standard practice today to produce the subgrade of the individual layer by machine control. It uses a GNSS positioning technology to steer the machine and use internet technologies to communicate with each other at the construction site. And machine control was used in a rail grading project near Grand Rapids, wherein scooping of piles of dirt from the top to the last measure cut and dumping them to the company adopted machine control, which paid actually dividends for the, on the project. In traditional construction, building plan goes dormant when construction is completed. By contrast, if we are using geospatial data along with BIM, it remains active as a part of the building management toolbox, and the building operates in the same way as a city or region that has well-maintained information system. Now, though geospatial and BIM has developed separately, but are conceptually related and should become a kind of seamless link to enable better development and regulatory control. In the infrastructure sec industry, BIM is enabling the information sharing and integration practice culture to emerge. So the effect of geo plus BIM is spreading across the built environment that we see today. The, inter the Internet of Things that is emerging as a further factor. This affects how building elements are tagged, shipped, and tracked, but also how they can form a sentinel system to support the construction and operations of the building or infrastructure. <coughs> Understanding this connect and integration of the two technologies for the construction sector we are, the like Geospatial Media had brought this high-level discussion forum, that is GeoBIM Europe, that aims to bring together the experts from the geospatial, AEC, and infrastructure industry across the region to come and deliberate on the two technologies and integration of the same. In the quest of to understand this construction industry, Geospatial Media is undertaking a small survey to understand the uptake level of geospatial and BIM in the construction sector. And I would like to share this platform, uh, I would like to share with this platform the initial findings of this survey. 
which we have done with few users right now, and it is an ongoing process right now. What we have found that globally, geospatial and BIM is finding increased attention from the construction sector. However, the level of maturity in <coughs> using differs in different regions. The USA continues to be the leader in usage and is evolving rapidly. Adoption in Australia is also impressive with high usage reported by professionals. In Europe, it is used in almost a third of the project, of which the architects are the primary adopters with engineers and contractors lagging behind. Most of the non-users are evaluating its potential, and the driving factor for them is to see it improve communication, speed design, eliminate errors, make a safer work site, and reduce cost. In emerging countries such as Middle East, China, and India, are still lagging and facing similar challenges, including lack of experienced professional and a very high cost of this entire technology. And the construction sector in the developed world is rapidly embracing this technology as a catalyst agent for gaining operational efficiency and to con consider it as an additional business avenue in the developing world. Coming to Asia, where the market is driven by owners. A small percentage of the firm, that is 15% in China market, are currently using this technology. Of this, the early adopters are contractors, uh, while 55% have heard of BIM technology. This awareness will be crucial for a step towards wider adoption. In Hong Kong, the BIM is used in frequently like a unique project requirement which will further grow with support from the government in terms of policy, mandates, and initiatives. The Malaysian market is mainly a private initiative driven by the larger property developers and contractors. And coming to India, in India, the large construction companies are starting to implement BIM in India with distinct benefits but with a very high cost. Coming to the value propositions or the utility of these technologies providing to the stakeholders, 62% of the uh, respondents say that the, it is providing them with a business value in reducing the work or maintaining the repeat business, while 55% accuse project value of collective understanding and reduce reduction in conflicts. Each player on the construction project has their own unique workflow and demands, therefore each has a different value proposition. One area that all major players agree is critical to their ability is the interoperability between software used by the team members. So architects have the most experience with BIM and they have perceived by as one of the greatest beneficiaries when we were doing this survey. And the contractors are placing high value on collaboration followed by scheduling and cost control and are tightly aligned in construction. This is attitude among the non-users wherein small percentage who have used it have decided not to use it again. They have said that no, they have not found that much of value probably because they are using it for a small projects and the primary reason probably was that they want to evaluate it for some more time. Following are some of the initiatives in the government globally, like in USA, UK, Norway, Norway. then Danish government has also taken up steps, Finland, Hong Kong, and South Korea, but we really need to work towards making a kind of policy advocacy wherein government initiatives to mandate the use of these technologies can be taken up at the policy level. With this, I would like to reaffirm that the integrated technology of geospatial and BIM will bring growth to the economy, and our deliberations today and tomorrow will look forward to that. How do we integrate these technologies to take forward the construction sector? Thank you. Thank you.